it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. So I had a really cool special request for Christmas. It was actually to make Santa Claus. I mean, usually for Christmas, um, off the mat characters, I feel like I've gotten the Grinch quite a bit, um, or just other characters in general for birthday parties, like the princesses behind me, LOL dolls. But Santa Claus, it makes perfect sense, right? So I wanted to show you from the beginning because I just bought this file on Etsy. So I'm actually gonna show you um, while it's still available. I haven't downloaded it. So to show you how to download your purchase, upload it, or actually download, unzip, upload it into Design Space, and then actually go on with the off the mat tutorial. So I hope that's helpful to you. You can fast forward if you already know how to do this, but this is how I do it. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm on Etsy. Um, but this would be, I think, the same for almost any site that you buy it from. Normally, it's going to be under your profile, under purchases, for you to go and actually download the um, the file. So here are all the things that I bought. So you can see I bought this recently as well. Um, but anyway, so we're going to download the file. And um, let's see. So download here. And it's usually a zip file because what I've noticed is they'll give you the option of an SVG file, PNG, JPEG. So you have all these different options. So here is my file over here. So it's zipped. I'm going to click on it and I like to show in folder. And here is the folder. So you double click on it and interesting, there are quite a few and I'm not sure what the difference is. So this is whole, let's make this a little bit bigger to see what it is. Whole length apart in black. Oh man. Um, let's try this one first. So what I do is I take my SVG file, so the scalable vector graphics, put it into my desktop because that's where I'm going to go and upload it from. So now in design space, oops, um, here's design space. I'm going to do new project and just start fresh. Let me open this up. Okay. So let's go and upload our file, right? So you're going to go to upload, upload image, browse, and we put it in our desktop, right? And it was called Santa Claus. So you can just go down and find your Santa Claus. And hopefully this is the right one because that did not look that fun to go and find which file we need. So let's double click on it and see what we have. Okay, perfect. This is sort of what we want. Ah, uh, but it's a hot mess. Okay, so let's save it for now. Um, you do want to name it um, appropriately because it's going to be in our image library. So if you name, if you take the time to name it appropriately, which I just did not, <laughs> I know I should, it should become habit because a year from now, if I want to search for this image, I can just go to images. So what you don't want to do is click it and insert image. What I would want to do is go into images, like I said, a year from now and type in Santa Claus. So I'm going to type in Santa Claus. and just hit enter so it'll and your options here is you can go into ownership and you can click on just upload it so these are the files you know you uploaded so here it is so i have a santa um cookie plate that we did recently this month so if you want to search for that but it's just a tray that says here's your favorite cookie whatever but i'm glad to see that my santa images are up here so here is this one now you know how to upload and now you also know how to find it so, oh, so the problem with this is that means we need to slice everything out because everything is really big right now, right? Like here's the red, the red is gigantic, even though it's just his jacket, right? It looks like this is what they use as our background file. So let's go back to our files and let's go to downloads. Let's go back in there and see if there's a better one um, to upload. So whole length, black, gray. Oh, maybe this is the one I want. Whole length together. Let's see if that one's better because I don't want them broken up into colors. Although let's see what it looks like. Okay. So let's do this gray one. And I'm just moving it because you can't upload directly from a zipped file. So this is the file unzipped, right? So you can see everything that's in there. 
And then what you want to do is you want to move it into another um, folder, or in this case, I'm moving it into my desktop so that it's broken apart and I can individually pick those to upload into Design Space. So let's go into Design Space. Let's click on Upload and bring in those other files and hopefully it's a little bit easier for us to use. So let's go to Upload Image, Browse, and this is good practice. It gives us another chance to upload something. So um, let's go down to our Santa Claus section. And okay, so we did the whole length apart whole length. So let's do whole length together and see what that gives us. Okay, so this might be what we want. So Santa Claus. So here, maybe I would separate it like this. Um, but I'm glad that it says Santa Claus. You could add other tags here. So uh, Christmas. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I can't think. Christmas decor, then you can just find it um, next time that you search for things. So let's click Save. And let's see what this file actually looks like. So I'm gonna insert it and look at it. So for now, I'm going to, let's see. Oh, this might be more of what we're looking for. So let me go up to this one and I'm just gonna delete that one, okay? So let's look at this file. So this file, it does look like each item is individual. Um, pieces like our gold buckles they're all separated I like that the only thing is as I scroll down okay so the red is actually our background our full file so what's cool about this file is there's no technically no outline so if you see normally our off the mat characters I'll bring in one so that you can see what it looks like um, like this one. So for our Grinch hand, what's different is it has a black outline and then every all the colors sit on top, but you have a black outline for everything, which means in this case for the Grinch's hand, if you made it so big, wherever we slice it, the black is going to show a little bit of a slice. And I know I did this um, just last week, I had to slice the ornament off. So there was like a thin seam right here and right here. So it's tiny. It's like a quarter of an inch, if that, um, because the red would cover it. The red was, um, it fit on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. So it covered the seam that was running across right here, but obviously not the edges. So that's the difference between having an outline and in this case, not having an outline, right? Because it looks like the colors just kind of sit on a background. But if we did have a black background, um, it would be completely covered except for where the mittens are and stuff. So what we could do in this case is, and I like doing, I like having a solid background because I like having the pieces sit on top. It's just um, easier to put it together because you actually have something to tape it onto. And then you take that whole image and put it on a foam board. So it's just sturdy, it's easy to put onto, and it also helps you kind of keep your pieces together. Um, in this case, it looks like, like I said, they did the red as the background, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna change this to my black, okay? And the reason why is because I, I buy a lot of black paper, um, I get it on sale, <laughs> and it's 65 pound cardstock, so I kind of um, just wanna keep it in my mind when we go to cut it that I know I'm gonna use black glitter cardstock here. So let's see, our red disappeared completely. So actually, let's undo this for a second. Let's, all of our red pieces, like the hat, and this is how you can tell. So here are our two red pieces, which looks like it's tiny. It's the nose and his tongue. That's what these two pieces. So his hat, and his jacket is actually part of the background, which in this case we don't want. So let's do this. Let's um, let's make it the size that we want. So let's do this at, my Grinch is at 36 inches. Is the Grinch taller or is Santa taller? I'm not sure, but <laughs> let's do it at 30 inches and just see what we have. Okay, so let's zoom out for, or yeah, 
Let's go out and see what we have. So at 30 inches, he's wide. He's 20 inches this way. Um, okay, so let's do him at 30 inches. Um, trying to think we should make him bigger, but I think 30 inches is a good is a good size here. Now what we're gonna wanna do is, let's ungroup this for a second. And, okay, this is what we need to do. <laughs> because the red, if we keep it the way it is, at 30 inches with the red, we're gonna have seams everywhere. So we don't necessarily want the seams to be showing because these individual pieces probably aren't that big. Um, so we're gonna need to slice everything out of the red, okay? So what I mean by that is we're gonna take the red over here, so select the red and, oh man. Uh, so interesting. Okay, so what we need to do, this file, I know it's it's a tough one. What you need to do is, do you see how the gold, it says to ungroup. That means if I want to slice all three of these out, I can't because that would be three pieces plus from the red, that's four pieces and you can't slice four things at one time, right? You can only slice two things at one time. So what you need to do then is you need to weld the gold so that it's one, image so now do you see how it went from three individual pieces to one piece of all three so we're going to select the gold we're going to select the red so hit the shift and the red and we're going to slice it okay so now from our red we don't have that okay now we're going to keep moving on let's grab santa claus weld it and we're gonna well or slice the red from our remaining red. So click the shift key and hit our background and slice. And don't worry about these individual pieces. What we're gonna do then is once we get our red separated, then we're gonna go and bring in another new Santa because all of these are already ungrouped. It'll be super easy to, to handle once we do that. Okay, so we've got our red out. We did our belt buckle. Um, let's look at the black and weld that to make it from seven pieces or whatever down to one. So we're gonna take our black and our red, so hit the shift key and hit the red and slice. Okay, so we can get rid of that, get rid of this. So you see our, our red is dwindling down. It used to be 30 inches. It's now 26 inches because we got rid of everything that's not red and there's still more to do. So let's look at our white pieces. So here are all our white. Um, it's quite a, quite a bit of pieces. Let's weld that so it becomes one image. Then we're gonna take our white, hit the shift key, our red, and slice. And actually all of this stuff right here, we can delete. We won't deal with it right now. So let's look at this, right? That's all our white pieces. Okay, so we're dwindling down. Let's see what's left. This is his face. Let's do the face, hit the shift key, the red and slice. So here's our, let me undo that. So we can get rid of this and let's get rid of our face, delete and delete. Anything that's a slice result, we can delete except for the red because we're um, narrowing down the red and removing everything. So, all right, so here's our gray. So let's grab this and weld it. Then from the gray and the red, we're going to slice. So now we've gotten down to the nitty gritty of the red. 
and let's grab these two things and delete and I think we still have one more thing okay so what's left is the red pieces here okay these are all our red this is our red hat his jacket and a little bit of the pants okay so this looks like it's in one two three four five pieces so we're going to let's grab a square and start slicing these pieces apart so our red is in five pieces but right now it's 15 and a half by 24 inches so you can't cut it um, as is right so we need to separate out the pieces individually they're probably pieces that we can cut on with a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock so let's grab that and slice and i'm going to use the same square to slice it all out so you see now we can get rid of the slice results here are his pants his pants are now isolated eight and a half inches by two inches great we can cut that on the cricket right so let's do the next piece let's do this side of the jacket and slice and this is a lot of work um oh shoot i didn't do this right do you see i wanted to isolate this piece but i left this piece in there so let me undo this that's a good no-no for slicing when you're slicing you can only slice two things at one time right so we know that but what you're trying to isolate, like in this case, we're trying to remove this piece from the united piece. So you wanna make sure that your square or whatever shape you're using only covers all of that one piece. Cause you saw earlier, it moved over here. So then you got um, bits and pieces, which you don't want. You want the piece that you want isolated, completely covered and only that piece. Now we can grab the square and the red and slice. All right, so we can get rid of that and let's see how big this piece is. So this piece is six and a half, about six and a half by seven inches. Perfect. We can cut that and it's going to look seamless as well, right? So if you remember our original image, the red was 30 inches and it was going to have seams everywhere. But when you break this down, his jacket on the left hand side um, is only six and a half by seven. So this jacket is going to be seamless his pants are seamless and hopefully the rest of him as well so let's remove this piece and you see how the tip right here is sticking up a little bit you can rotate this and now only that piece is covered by the um by our square right so i'm going to grab these two and i'm going to slice so now the right hand side of his jacket is separated into two pieces one is four inches by two inches perfect and it's totally seamless and this one you see how it's here i know it's not coming through this the open area so that's good and the hat is still up here outside of the square so now i can grab these two items and slice and let's see what we have hopefully we have a beautiful seamless um, bunch of red pieces Okay, so this piece is seven and a half inches by almost eight inches, so perfect. And then our hat is 12 and a half inches by 7.7. .7. So if you're looking at me like, oh, that's too big for my 12, and a half, 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, just know that this is the, the width, right? The width, the way Design Space measures it, is from the most left to the most right. So if you're looking at the most left, it's here, and the most right is here then the difference is 12 and a half. But if I shift this a little bit, so I'm gonna rotate it, okay? I'm gonna change what's the most left and what's the most right. So if I do this, it's still the same hat, right? You saw it, I didn't change the dimensions or the hat itself or sliced it, I just rotated it so that I was changing what is now the most left. The most left is here and the most right is here. It's now only 10 inches across and 10 and a half inches down. So my hat is seamless. So Santa Claus is gonna be beautiful and seamless, even though it didn't seem like it at the beginning. So all of our red pieces can cut on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and it's gonna look seamless, which is, I love, right? We make things big, but we wanna make it seamless and beautiful. We don't wanna make it big just for the sake of making it big. Um, at least I don't want to. <laughs> okay, so let's upload our Santa again, now that we were able to isolate his whole piece, right? All the red pieces are isolated. So what we wanna do now is we wanna make him 30 inches because 
The rest of him needs to match the red that we worked so hard to get separated, right? Okay, so we know we don't need the red, or actually his nose and his mouth we still need. Um, so all you need to do for all these colored pieces is we need to ungroup everything. So now the red, right, is ungrouped. So they're in individual pieces. See, like the nose and the little tongue, all good, right? Um, what we need to do though is we need to have a solid background, right? Which I said was gonna be this red guy. So I'm gonna change the red, hold on. Let's look at our black. I do think that for the black, let's see what we have. We have a belt buckle that is kind of long. So hold on to that thought. I think what I'm gonna do with the belt is let's ungroup it for a second and see how long our belt is. So our belt is, oh, it's seamless. It's 11 inches by 2.2 inches. So originally I was gonna slice out the belt buckle to make it into pieces, but we're fine. That's one piece right there. Let's ungroup this. And I'm just gonna change the color of my black to blue. Just so that, because I wanna use, um, I wanna use glitter, black glitter cardstock for my for my black pieces that are that are out and present. Um, what I don't want is my background um, to be black glitter cardstock because it would be wasteful. I'm gonna use that um, as 65 pound cardstock. So what's gonna happen is basically this outline over here, this guy, instead of being red, he's gonna be black. So that is gonna be my bottommost layer where all my colors are going to sit on top. So changing this to blue just signal, signals to me when I go to cut it on my machine that right, obviously there's no blue in this whole thing. So that's why I picked blue. I'll remember that that needs to be black glitter cardstock. So here's a quick way to find all the pieces you want is to go to color sync. Color sync breaks down all the pieces by colors. So right now, and it's just taking a moment to upload all the information. Okay, so here's my black, right? Here are my eyes. I want it to be, you know, the black glitter cardstock, the boot. So you can see you can move these things down here. And the only thing that I want in black is my black background, right? That is gonna be invisible. No one's gonna see it, it's gonna have seams, and that's the only thing that's gonna have seams. This Santa's gonna look so, so good. Um, and I almost feel like we could have made him bigger, right? Because our biggest piece so far is this red. So we probably could have made him just a little bit bigger, but that's okay. Um, okay, so here's all our black, all of our pieces. Let's go back to the layers. I think all of our pieces, our, oh, let's ungroup it. So anything that's grouped together, we wanna ungroup. And the reason is because when we go to cut it, um, it's gonna be separated out so that you can make it really efficient and you can save your cardstock for another project. So I'm gonna ungroup all of our colors, basically. So anything that says group, you just ungroup. So that, I think, will leave us, okay, I think we're ready. So the only thing we have left is our back, black background <laughs> hold on let's look at our gray okay so here's our white we need to ungroup it let's see if any of our pieces are too big nope 11 inches by five and a half we're good there let's look at this so this needs to be ungrouped and let's see if we want to do anything here i don't think we do okay so this one is nine inches by 12.2 and so I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit to see if I can get this to work. And this one might not work. 11 point, okay, so it is a little bit too, too big, but this is what you can do. As long as you get, okay, so 11 and a half, so it's 11 and a half by 12. Okay, we can trick the Cricut to cut this with a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, but it's gonna be close. But I, it's okay, I'm gonna walk you through this. 
I think it's okay in this piece because if we accidentally cut off a little bit of his beard, it's still gonna look very natural. It's not gonna look like, oh my gosh, there's a piece missing from his beard. We're gonna use the 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. The machine's gonna think that we're gonna be using 12 by 24 cardstock, but I will show you on the Make It screen how we're gonna trick it. So, so far, I think all of our pieces are good, but this gray piece, was there any gray in our, hold on, let's upload this image and look at this again. So the gray is a little bit of an outline. So let's look at this for a second. So our gray is the outline of things. So it is a little bit big. Um, if we don't have the gray, let me see what this looks like. If we don't do the gray, then we would see the black background. That's what that is. Okay, so I guess the question is, do we want the gray? And if we do want the gray, we need to work on it. Okay. So that's all that's left, the gray and the black. So basically the gray, what I feel like we need to do with the gray is the same thing that we did to the red, is isolate it so that the individual pieces fit, um, you know, they're smaller. Although th this is gonna be a problem right here because it's gonna look like, hmm, this piece is gonna be too long and it's all connected. So I'm almost wondering what would it look like? So let's look at this one. What would it look like if we change the gray right here, if we change that to black, what would this image look like? Okay, so that's what it would look like. Um, I don't think that looks bad. So I'm actually gonna just get rid of the gray. Um, because that's gonna be our black background. So I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna delete the gray. This is what he's gonna look like. This cuff, of course, is gonna be black. Um, so I guess the only thing I wanna do though is, hold on. I do wanna make this as seamless as possible. So where we have these cutouts, um, like this, the cuffs, oh, I don't know if it's worth doing it. Okay, we're gonna do it. I'm gonna try to make this as seamless as possible. So if we isolate the gray like we did with the red, then the cuff, for instance, will be a black, solid black. So if there were seams right here, we would, that's the, our isolated black is just gonna cover those seams. So um, why is that cuff? Still gray. Here it is. So this, this, and this I want to be black. Let me change that to black for a second. Okay. So for this one, we want to make sure he's 30 inches again because we're going to be isolating the black this time, okay? So let's go look at our black pieces. Um, I know this is getting complicated. This file is too, too crazy. Um, well, I don't, we don't need to, oops, let me ungroup this. This black piece right here, the cuff, is already isolated. So let me ungroup it some more. Oh, I don't know. I'm not, just not feeling like how complicated this is getting. 
I'm gonna say we're gonna ignore it. We're gonna let the black be the black, okay? So he's gonna look like that. Um, okay, so now we just have this black background that we need to deal with. So let's move him down. Um, let's go into shapes and bring in a square. We're gonna slice him into 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock. Um, technically we can cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half, right? But I don't like dealing with half inches, so I'm gonna make this square 11 inches by 11. So we're gonna go up here and change the dimensions to 11 by 11. Then we're just gonna plop it down right here. We know he's 20 inches by 30. So going across, like we need two columns, right? Because one column is 11 inches plus another 11 inches, let me make sure I'm in there, is 22 inches. So two columns will cover this piece, right? And then we're gonna need three rows to get to 30 inches. Three rows will give us 33 inches. So this is what we do. First square. Go up to your position feature and just round to the nearest whole number. So seven and a half becomes eight. 41.444 becomes 41. Basically what we told Design Space is the X um, coordinate is the one going across. So we're saying go over eight and then go down 41 units. This is the beginning of our square. We're gonna duplicate this square if you put it close enough to the first one, you won't have to do any like real math. We won't have to add. You can just round to the nearest whole number. So 19.2 becomes 19, 41 is already good. So now we have two squares that are completely flushed, right? So hit the shift key, grab the other square. So now you have both squares highlighted and you can tell from over here, they're both um, with the gray so that you know those are the two pieces that are highlighted right now. We're gonna duplicate it because they're already flushed with each other. We're gonna now make both sets flushed with each other. So if you put this one close enough to the top one, you're just gonna go up here and your position is eight, it's already good, and then change 52.1 to 52. Okay, then we're gonna duplicate that set and then here's our last set. So Santa took six squares basically to chop up so that we can cut on our Cricut machine. So again, we're gonna go up here to the coordinates and change it from 8.056 to eight, and then 63.0 something becomes 63. So now you have six squares that are completely flush with each other. I personally think this is the best way to do it. I've seen other um, crafters just use a 11 and a half by 11 and a half square and just start slicing things out. The problem with that is when we go to put this together, you want the pieces to butt up against each other. It's one, it's easier to do it that way. You know exactly where all the pieces go. They all match just like a puzzle. They go right up to each other. There's gonna be four corners right here. The four corners go in, it's super easy. Um, and that's, secondly, it's gonna help you um, make it as seamless as possible because all of them go up, butt up to each other. You can tape it, it's as seamless it's gonna look as good as it can be. If you have things that you don't know exactly where it goes, it just gives you room for it to be just misaligned a little bit. So here are our six pieces. I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> I'm gonna also show you the math behind it. So this one started at eight, right? So it starts right here at eight plus 11. This piece is gonna be at 19, right? And it's at 19. So that's basically all that it is. Um, let's go grab our black background. Here he is on the panel, arrange, send to the front, and here he is. Now, I'm gonna zoom in so that you can see it. The exercise here that we're gonna be doing is just to make sure that everything, that we're cutting it into six big pieces. What you don't want is like this. Of his hat, all of a sudden, you now need to keep track of this little piece over here. What would be better, hopefully, is yes. See now, this whole ball thing is gonna be connected to his this big piece. This is gonna be one giant piece. This is gonna be the other giant piece. This is gonna be six big pieces, which I love this. Yeah, everything looks good here. Um, I guess the only thing is maybe we split it right here so that there are no seams, and then it's gonna split up his pants. Everything I think looks good. All right, so let's slice Santa from a 30 by 20 inch piece into pieces that we can cut on the Cricut. So one square at a time, 
we're going to slice him out. And I like to just bring it over and reassemble him over here. One, it just keeps track of all your pieces and make sure it's all good. And two, um, this piece doesn't look complicated, but when you go to cut it and you take it off your mat, sometimes I flip it over and I don't realize that it's upside down. It, this is just easier. I know where the, you know, where this little ball goes. I, just trust me. There are a lot of pieces to this. This is the last thing you want to do is waste time trying to piece it together. <laughs> and it still confuses me. So, all right. So here's the other piece. And we don't need all these, um, all of these pieces. You can just delete all the slice results. Oops. I usually do it at the end and for a good reason because I just got rid of the big piece. <laughs> okay, so let's slice this down here. Let's just continue slicing him around. He has three more pieces that need to be um, sliced out. So I'm just moving all the way around. Okay, so now I think I have all the pieces. So let's move it over. Perfect. And then, oh, what happened here? Why is it, oh, there's a little piece up there. Let's go to contour. For some reason, just get rid of that. I There must be a little piece up here that somehow didn't, didn't connect properly. So there we go. Okay, so now this, we can just delete. We don't need any of those pieces. All right. And I think we're done. Let's save him. Santa, 30 inches. And then I'm gonna go to the make it screen because I wanna show you how to um, avoid that one piece that we said was a little bit too big. Um, so let's see, okay, perfect. Oh no, don't do this to me. Okay, so it got rid of it. I've had this happen to me before. I am going to, to close this out and open it up again and pray that my project is still there so that I can show you. <laughs> so I this is a glitch that has been happening. It doesn't happen all the time and now it won't even let me close this thing out. Are you kidding me? Um, hmm. Oh, there. Okay, so let's go back to this. Open, and hopefully my project will be there. Nothing else we can do. It's like, ah, and it's not there. Okay. So if you remember, there was one piece that said it was 11 and a half inches by 12. And technically we have the cardstock, it's 12 by 12, so it would fit on there. So let me walk you through what that would be. So you would change, it would automatically say, hey, you have a piece that is more than 11 and a half inches long. No problem, just say yes, proceed. It's gonna look like you're on, you have to use a 12 by 24 mat because it's gonna assume that you are using a, a 12 by 24 piece of cardstock. What I would do is make sure that you get it onto 12 inches, okay? So um, rotate the piece or however you need to to get it to be 11 and a half by 12. Put it down on there. Then it's gonna go all the way to 12 inches, right? So with your cardstock, when you place it on your mat, you need to place it so that there's like just a sliver going a little bit past the 12 inches. Because if you know, it's not gonna cut right from the top at zero, it's gonna go down a quarter of an inch. So that's gonna give us the leeway of being able to cut this um, completely. We'll see. That's how I would do it. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't show you, but I will be making this project. So I'll show you what it looks like. I'm going to redo it. 
or I'm gonna hope that tomorrow when I log in, it will magically reappear and I don't have to redo this. Um, but anyway, <laughs> please post your feedback here. I would love to see your comments, uh, questions, let me know. And then if you have a special request, let me know as well. Just like this one was a special request for Santa, um, just post it in the comments, either on Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook. And then if you have additional things like a specific file or other requests that you wanna add on there, just email me. It's Ann, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com. All right. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys later. Bye.